You heard it, up 8% this year. What's behind the rally? It's a uh, contributing factors, Taylor. It's been a, a long rally. It began in November of 2018. It's been robust and sustainable. What's driving it, however, is this supply-demand dynamic underlying the market. Traditionally, when rates rallied, gross issuance would increase. Now that advanced refunding bonds were removed in tax reform, as rates rally, gross issuance is not increasing. So we've been in a net negative issuing environment. And when you have a technical that strong, coupled with falling interest rates, easier monetary policy, both domestic and globally, you have a backdrop that, that supports the fundamentals for municipal credit, as well as for duration via lower interest rates. And you were talking about what is behind the rally also coming from the demand side. And we have ICI out with their weekly inflows, mm -hmm. and it has just been inflow after inflow. Talk to me about that and if that does continue into Q4. Sure, our flows have been sensational. We just received our 34th consecutive week of inflows, almost 65 billion year to date, second only to 2009. By our calculation, we'll set a new record by early October. Wow. It does feel as though inflows are going to continue. However, they may not be this robust heading into Q4, which tends to have additional, uh, a different seasonal influence to it. But we don't see any uh, reversal of flows as um, you know, performance has been strong, supply has been minimal. Typically, demand will continue into that environment. As a measure of relative value in the muni market, you look at the muni yield divided by the treasury mm -hmm. yield, which we call the muni to treasury ratio. Mm -hmm. You write in your piece that that's informative, but less informative than it used to be. Why? That's right. So in markets where you have both crossover and non-traditional buyers, as well as retail buying the asset class, ratios matter. When it's a retail-driven rally, which is what we've been experiencing since November of 2018, retail tends to care less about that exact ratio. So while they do have information of value to them, they have less predictive power when retail is driving the rally. Thus, we put a little bit more, a little less influence on them today. When we do enter a market again, where we're looking for a crossover bid or a non-traditional buyer to come back into the asset class, that's when ratios will again become important. I've spoken with a few bankers, and they say they have never seen a time like this before with record low yields. You have issuers really just flooding the market and fewer and fewer protections for buyers. Mm -hmm. You're on the buy side. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, how does this feel relative to, let's say, 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. Those types of deals are coming more in the high yield space. And this is what happens when there is a 10 month rally and up nearly 10% over the past 10 months. You begin to get issuers that come with less covenants, less protection. That's why you need a large dedicated credit research team to do the work and look under the hood and understand what it is you're buying today and that you'll be comfortable holding it one year, three year, five years down the road. And it feels like... 2007, 2008? It does. It begin uh, in the high yield space. You do begin to see some remnants of what we saw in 2007, mm -hmm. early 2008.